Question. Is Walmart holding meetings with department heads and managers all over the country to discuss the negative effects employees could experience if Walmart were forced to unionize its stores? Our colleagues at The Wall Street Journal report the country's biggest employer, private employer, made clear to employees in the, these meetings that the Democratic Party, specifically Barack Obama, could lead to unionization, but Walmart denies that part. We are joined by Herman from the Center for Union Facts, along with Megan Scott, from wakeupwalmart.com. Good to have you both. Um, Thank Rick, you, Liz. Let me start with you. Inherently, sure. is there anything wrong with Walmart holding these meetings? There's actually not anything wrong with them holding them if they are holding them, but I've encouraged businesses across the country to start holding these meetings because the labor union movement has been trying to get this proposed law to fly under the radar so that people wouldn't rise up in violent objection to it. And some, uh, some businesses are now starting to get the joke and they're starting to recognize that the unions are trying to hijack not only the uh, union organizing system that's been in place in this country for over 60 years, but also the political system by forcing lots of employees, millions of employees into unions, collecting forced dues and picking up billions of new dollars, which will allow them to hijack the political system right. and the collateral damage will be huge. But so, Megan, yeah, businesses should be talking about it. Let's take the most contentious part of this story that our colleagues at the wrote. And it's one, by the way, that Walmart has denied that they at, at <clears> these <throat> meetings that they don't deny having held. Uh, suggesting that unionization might hurt uh, the company, that there were suggestions that they encourage the workers to vote Republican, or at least against Obama, because Obama would unionize Walmart. Now, if Walmart is so bad for the workers, why would the workers possibly do what Walmart would want them to do in terms of voting? So, Rick, you believe that these workers are lying to your colleagues in the journal, talking about the fact that... No, answer that the question. If, if, if Walmart is so bad to its workers, why would they believe that the workers would vote in private the way Walmart would want them to? I can tell you that uh, our campaign has been getting calls from workers across the country, every region of the country, for the last month or so saying, I just came out of this meeting. In some of the meetings, they went so far as to say, don't vote for Barack Obama. In other meetings, they said, well, we're not going to tell you who you should and shouldn't vote for. But these workers are coming out of these meetings feeling very uncomfortable. But, leaving. Megan, you've got to answer my question at least once. Why do you think Walmart would believe they're smart people that run the company? Why do they think that the workers would follow their advice into a private voting booth when you say that they treat the workers so badly? These are people who are living in fear of losing their jobs. But they're, the Walmart they're executives can't go into the voting influence. booth with these people. No, that's... <laughs> And, but, that, and that's, the, that's the whole that's the whole that's the whole point here, because the law that uh, that these people on the other side are trying to pose is that when people vote for unionization, they will have to vote in public. And there is in that situation intimidation and coercion and deception, which have been uh, not only ratified by the Supreme Court and other federal courts, but even the unions themselves. The AFL-CIO says that when you have to vote in public, that it's not a real indication of what people but have Rick, in their heart. Rick, but now, I, Rick, now they're, they're worried on. that people are going to vote in private. But, you know, it's not just the unions it, that you say are intimidating. I've been at television stations where there was fear on behalf of management. Uh, the reporters or the photographers might unionize. So they called us into meetings and explained to us. I think it's their right to explain, Rick, why it's a bad idea. But there is that uh, yes, unspoken uh, sort of, not threat, but, hey, you know, you better not kind of thing. And there is also hey, you know, you know, you know what? Let Rick respond, here, please. Here, here, here's, what the, here's what they're telling you. They're telling you, as we advertised yesterday, Today in the paper that unions have been complicit in putting the steel industry out of business, the auto auto parts and the auto industry near bankruptcy in many cases. Well, the auto the company, Aero, the, the, the auto the Aero Aero signed those union deals. They well, regret them true. now, they, obviously. They, but. Uh, sure, but they, they signed them under enormous pressure. And yes, they made some stupid short-term deals, but somebody forced them into making these bad deals. And so what you found when you were in the news studios was that someone was telling you, look, here's the downside. Here's the dark side of unionization. And if some employer tells tells his employee that you ought to think about the downside of this, all they're doing is giving them facts. They don't know how they're going to vote when they have to vote in private, and that ought to be the system that is sustained today. Megan, you wanted to jump in. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, this is, um, when you're talking to workers and encouraging them ways to vote or not vote, 
I mean, this is, this is not, there's a certain group of people that these corporations are allowed to have the conversations with, and these hourly workers are not included in Wait, those Wait, what do you, is there a law against them speaking to hourly workers? There's no law against that, is there? Yeah, actually, the federal election law uh, stipulates who they can and cannot talk to. They and can't even hold workers, a meeting with these These department people. managers, they can Listen, hold meetings with them. They can't wait to vote. Well, that's, you, that's you know, the question. And that's, and that's the whole deal. If you, if you give people facts and you assume that they're smart enough to actually fill out an employment application form and hold down a job, and then you give them facts, they can decide for themselves which way they want to vote on anything. And that's how it ought to be in federal, state, local elections, as well as union organizing elections, allowing people to make up their own mind in private. Megan, is, Megan, did you hear from people who said they were told how to vote or was it just, you know, we think that it's not a great idea to join? No, we, we heard from several people in, in a bunch of different states around the country who said they told us not to vote for Obama. And if we do, there's a chance that we might lose our jobs or that well, how we would they to know? take our money. Yeah, how Since voting know? is private, Megan, how could the management possibly know the way they voted? They Come don't on. know, but that, well, and they're not saying they're going to know the way they voted, but this is, they're intimidating well, workers. Well, then if, if the management doesn't know the way they jobs. voted, they couldn't intimidate the workers. Of course they could. These are people who are working for low wages. They can barely afford the health care that Walmart is But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How would management know who they were voting for? Voting is private, private. Megan. Exactly. Except when, except if Megan has her way and we're voting for a union, and then you'll have to vote in front of a union right. organization. Okay. Rick, team shot, Rick. Right. Team shot. Okay. We will continue this Rick and Megan, thank you but, but again. But a true thank one. You. Appreciate you coming in. Take care. Upset Yahoo.